our next guest, Pavel from Miskatonic Studio over here, um, is going to show us a little bit about Godot 4. Is there anyone here still using Godot 3? Oh, there we are. Wonderful. The, I think this is just the talk for you, because Pavel is going to show us some of the intricacies and things to be expecting when going to Godot 4. So, peeps, let's welcome him. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my talk. Um, the journey to Godot 4, what can you expect? As a short introduction, uh, I'm Pavel. I'm a software developer. A few years ago, I got myself into uh, game dev uh, as Miskatonic Studio, and since then I've released a couple of games. I created Godot Array modifier plugin, uploaded a bunch of shaders, and worked on a few other projects. And one of those projects is Godot Open Adventure Template, also known as GOAT. Um, it's a tool that lets you create first-person exploration 3D games where you walk around, pick up items, add them to your inventory, uh, use those items on other items, um, interact with uh, 3D screens, uh, play voiceover with uh, subtitles, modify some game settings and a few other things. The project is available on GitHub. Uh, it's about 6,000 lines of code and I'm talking about GD script files, um, the scene files and Godot res resources files. So those summed up are about 6,000 6, lines of code. And initially it was created with Godot 3, but uh, following the announcement of Godot 4, uh, I decided to uh, move it uh, there, uh, first to version 403, and very soon after that to version 401. Um, so if you go to Goat's code base on GitHub and you follow the, check the commit messages, you will see one absolutely huge commit called migrate to Godot 403. And a few commits later, there is a much smaller one, uh, upgrade to 411. And today I would like to talk to you about this process, uh, what went well, what didn't, what cool new things are there in Godot 4, and what um, bugs you might expect, and how to solve them, hopefully. Uh, so let's start with the fact that there is an automated tool for convert converting projects to Godot uh, 4. If you open your Godot 3 project with Godot 4 engine, you will be greeted with this screen. Uh, and you can upgrade either just the project to Godot file or the entire project. I have ever only chosen the second option. So if you choose that, you will have the classic are you sure? And if you confirm, Godot Engine 4 will do its best to migrate as much as possible, uh, leaving uh, you with just a couple of sorry, a couple of uh, interesting bugs to solve on your own. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. Um, first thing you will notice after migrating to Godot 4 is that a lot of names have changed. This should not be a surprise because the team's effort is to make the naming more consistent, make the whole engine more consistent. Uh, so now 3D objects will have 3D at the end of their name. Uh, things like translation is now called position, which is also more consistent. Methods like empty are now called is empty to make it clear that they answer a question and return a boolean. Um, some of these changes are pretty self-explanatory, like SS reflections enabled became SSR enabled, uh, but not all of them are that obvious, like Raycast had a property called, called cast2, now it's called uh, Raycast 3D, cast uh, target position. So you might need to, from time to time, check the documentation on how the new thing is called in the new version of the engine. Luckily, this process is done almost entirely automatically by that tool that you've seen in the previous screenshot. So I don't remember a single instance when just a normal change of the name caused any issues. So this, this, this should be solved. Uh, another thing that changes is the default size of objects. And it might be a small one, but depending on how many default objects you use, you might need to uh, update a lot of them. Uh, here we can see the uh, collision uh, area, uh, 3D mesh, and CSG box. And in Godot 3, they have a default size of 2. In Godot 4, it's the default size of 1. Um, well, this, is, this might be some manual work, but not really a big issue, because uh, you will notice that your models suddenly are half their size. Uh, also, this will not be a case if you are using uh, OBJ files, like external messages imported into a mesh instance node. Uh, you might need to pay special attention to collision areas, because if you have a lot of 3D objects in your scene, um, and collision areas, as you can see, are 
displayed in this wireframe thing, they could easily go unnoticed. So you might not notice that they are now uh, smaller, and then you run your program, and suddenly you can go through walls, which is probably not what you expect. Another thing that changed a bit is related to type hints. Um, so this example that you can see here works in Godot 3. It compiles, it, will, it doesn't crash, in, and it prints this output that we can see on the screen. Uh, so uh, the example with um, returning an integer from a method that declares a string is obviously wrong, but I didn't have that case. I did have, a, however, a case where, you would, uh, where one of my methods declared a string, but uh, returned a null uh, in some cases. So like, what was the name of the currently selected item in the inventory? If there was an item, it would return the name of the item. And if there were no items, it would return a null. Um, however, this stopped working in Godot 4. Uh, this fails at runtime in Godot 4. So you, you, you will try to return something that is not a string from a method that declares a string, you will get an error. Um, and again, for integer, it's obviously wrong, but I also thought that uh, I didn't have that example. I had an example with a null. So I thought that null was an allowed value for a string type in Godot 3. But I was wrong, because a slightly updated example uh, fails in both Godot 3 and Godot 4. Uh, this is not the, the, the version that Goat initially used. Um, like the, this is latest than the Goat uh, plugin used. Uh, because that's the the one that I kind of currently don't know that, but I assume that in 3.4.4 the error would be similar. Um, so this shows that null was never allowed for strings. It's just that Godot 4 does a better job at enforcing types because these errors will be shown in editor before your program even runs. Um, so points for Godot 4 for being more consistent. Uh, but not a great thing is that um, if you were kind of lose about your types, like I was, uh, you might have some uh, code to update. In my, so you can either return an empty string, that will work, or you can remove a type hint. Um, something changed about, about the environment, and I'm not sure if this is actually visible here on, in this sliding. Um, so this is the default scene of the demo game that Goat has, and there are shelves here and you can distinguish the top surface of the shelf from the side surfaces because there are reflections. Uh, and that is how it works in Godot 3. But after I imported it into Godot 4, the reflections disappeared, uh, which made the whole scene very dark and the, the shelves didn't look really good. So I started investigating an issue and I created a simple scene with one mesh instance uh, with a green reflective material, so albedo all the way to green, uh, reflections all the way to zero, uh, roughness all the way to zero, one camera pointing at that mesh, and one environment node. And um, these are the, so this is the configuration uh, on Godot 3 and Godot 4, and these are the results of the running program. And you can see that the default settings of the environment have changed significantly in Godot Free, you will get the reflections, but not the colors. In Godot 4, you will get colors, but not reflections. But what really doesn't help in investigating this issue is that uh, in the editor, both scenes look like this. So the Godot 3 one is very similar to what you get after running the program. But in Godot 4, the editor shows reflections, but the running program doesn't. So I really couldn't pinpoint what's the issue here, because in the editor, it looked good. But then after starting the program, it didn't. Um, well, I'm not sure if this was intentional, really, if, or if this is a bug about environments in Goto 4, but the solution was pretty easy. Just don't rely on default uh, settings. So uh, if you add explicitly uh, a procedural sky to environments, uh, then the problem is solved both in Goto 3 and in Goto 4. So just like before, uh, with default sizes of objects, it's not a good idea to rely on default values when it comes to making games. Uh, viewports. Um, so I write, like viewports a lot. Um, in Goat, in viewports are used for interactive screens, which are basically running a two-dimensional Godot engine scene uh, that you can interact with, with in 3D, but also for making miniature um, icons of in inventory objects. Uh, so some things have changed about viewports. Uh, first of all, they are not co not called viewports and viewport containers anymore. Now they are sub-viewports and sub-viewport containers. Uh, also, in Godot 
uh, free if you worked with viewports. You might remember this um, V flip flag. Uh, for because without it, uh, the, the texture would be upside down. It's no longer necessary in Godot 4. It's by default not upside down, which I'm very happy about because I don't remember a single case when I didn't want to check this checkbox. Um, and then, from my experience, it is a bit, it is a good idea to use linear filtering and MIP maps on such uh, viewport textures because without them, they are very sharp. The, the pixels are, are, are very sharp. So um, in Godot 4, uh, so in Godot 3, you would set those um, values in a code by accessing the viewport texture itself. In Godot 4, they are accessible in the editor. So there's a separate settings for texture filter and texture repeat. Uh, but the values are very similar, so you, you just need to know that it has moved. Unfortunately, there's also an issue with viewports. Um, so if you have a viewport with a transparent background and you enable um, reflections, uh, the whole picture goes blank. Uh, I have already reported and I'm sure it will be fixed very soon, uh, but uh, for GOAT it was a bit problematic because this 3D inventory uh, is made with a viewport container, viewport inside, and that viewport has a transparent background so that we see what's going on in the background. And I kind of wanted to have reflections here as well, but with them, the, I, I couldn't see any inventory items. The solution was for now to remove the reflections, like disable reflections in, in the viewport. I don't use currently uh, any objects for which this would be very relevant. So, uh, so I don't lose a lot right now, but I'm pretty sure that in the future the bug will be fixed and this will no longer be a problem. Twins have changed significantly in God of War. Uh, so in, in Goat, I use twins mostly for detailed interactions. So like you can click on an object and camera zooms in, and that is that whole interpolation is done with a twin. And then if you click Escape, it zooms out. Um, so in Godot 3, twins are nodes. You need to add them to your uh, scene, and in editor basically that's it because the whole the, the rest happens in the code. So you call methods like for example interpolate property, but also interpolate method and others. Uh, you pass a target object, uh, a name of the property, um, initial value, null for whatever the current value is, target value, duration, and then transition type and easing type. Um, and you call, call them for both, uh, every time you call this method. So uh, you can decide on method, uh, like on method basis what you want to do. And then you compile your project and nothing happens because you also need to start the twin explicitly using this last line of code. Without it, nothing will change. In Godot 4, twins are no longer nodes. Now they are created with create twin. And you define the easing on the node or on the twin level, not with every call. So if you are using multiple transition types or easing types, you might need multiple twins, I guess. Or probably you can change them uh, before every interpolation, depending on your case. Uh, of course, method's name, method name has changed. It's now twin property, not interpolate property. You still pass the object, the name of the property, no initial value. You just pass the target value. So if you want to start with a specific value, you just call this again with the initial value you want to start with and duration zero. So that will basically move your object to that value immediately. And then you proceed with normal interpolation. And you can still call multiple interpolations, but a huge difference is in Godot 4, they will be done one by one. And in Godot 3, they were done simultaneously. So this example in Godot 3 would move the, it would rotate the, the uh, color rect and change its color uh, at the same time. And in Godot 4, it will first change its color and then it will rotate it. And the side note here is that in Godot 4, rotation is in radians and in Godot 3, rect rotation was in degrees, which can be a huge difference. And last but not least, you don't need to call twin start, it, it starts automatically, which is very convenient. Blar. I really like this one. Um, because it creates a really cool effect of, uh, of this inventory background. Uh, this is a dynamic background, so this is basically a live feed from the 3D camera, in, and if ev anything is moving in the background, it will be also moving in this background. So like, there is a ceiling fan in the demo game. If you uh, look at, at it and then open the inventory, it will be still moving, but it will be blurred. So I really like this effect, and if you 
uh, also like Blur in Godot 4, then I have good news for you, because uh, it's been improved. Uh, first of all, it's no longer in the environment, uh, world environment. Now it's in camera attributes. The values are very similar, so still distance, transition, amount. But the quality setting, uh, which had three values in Godot 3, so me low, medium, and high, now is no longer in the attributes themselves. It's, um, it's uh, on the rendering server level or, or project settings level. And there are more options available. You can set one of four qualities, but also one of three shapes. So you have much more to choose from if you want, like, depending on what you want to achieve. Uh, of course, the circle one will be most realistic, but also uh, most resource consuming. Uh, so here we have a demo of the, the right one, the, the left one is a slideshow of three different quality settings in Godot 3. And the left, the right one is, the blue one is Godot 4 with running four different qualities with three different shapes. So you can see there is more stuff available, which I'm very happy about. And last thing that I wanted to mention is this weird issue I had uh, with um, embedded meshes. So uh, it, when, after I moved code to Godot 4, I imported these, uh, I, I looked at my objects in editor and I noticed that something is wrong. Initially I thought this might be a problem with lighting, but um, light, like, like the ref reflections have changed, so why not lighting? But upon closer inspection, it seems that this is a problem with uh, normals. So uh, what has happened here? Uh, well, these objects were not created by me. They were created by Dalton 5000, and he cr he made them for his own scene. I, I asked if I can use them for Goat. He said yes. Uh, so in, in Goat's README file, there is a link to the original project from which the models were imported, and that's the thing. They were imported, so I think they were in GLB format on initially, um, and I imported them to Godot for to Godot 3. Godot 3 created scenes out of them, and those scenes had mesh instances with array meshes inside. And those array meshes contained embedded all the vertices of these objects. And that worked. I, I, did, I couldn't like, edit them, but I could uh, move them around and scale them, so that was enough. Um, but in Godot 4, something has changed about these um, embedded meshes, and they didn't look really good. So the solution was to take every scene that had those embedded meshes, export it to Blender, select the corresponding uh, objects, um, export them to OBJ files, and move those files back to uh, Godot and substitute these embedded meshes with the same meshes that, just blend that Blender just exported. And then the problem was solved. And I know it sounds like a lot of work, but once I figured out what's going on, it was a very brainless mechanical process. I think I was done in an hour for the whole project, so it was really fast. And if, if you are using um, OBJ files or, or CSG constructive soil geometry, then this problem doesn't happen. It just happens with these imported embedded meshes. So, in summary, what can you expect from Godot 4? I would say a lot of good stuff. Um, so, uh, thank you. For, I would like to, from the bottom of my heart, thank the entire uh, Godot team. Uh, they've done an amazing job. Uh, like this, they delivered a fantastic piece of software. It's better. It's it feels better, it looks better, it has much more uh, features, and we've been all joking about uh, waiting for Godot. This year will be the year of the Godot. The wait is over, Godot 4 is here, and it is my personal opinion that if you are starting a project, you should start with Godot 4. If your project is still quite small, migrate it. If you have a big project and tight deadlines, possibly this is not the best moment to migrate your, uh, your project to Godot 4, because it will take some time, in my opinion, it's still worth it, but you know, uh, it, you need to check if, if you can allow that, uh, that effort of migrating. I still think that GOAT is now much better when it's in God of War, but also I, again, uh, I didn't have uh, a tight deadline that I need to release a game, for example. Um, so, uh, but other, in this case, or maybe if you are using a third party plugin that is available only for Godot 3 and that you cannot somehow rewrite on your own then it's also a good case. But I have noticed that many plugins are now also moving to Godot 4. Uh, this array modifier that uh, I mentioned in one of the first slides is available for Godot 4. So other than those, free, uh, that those few cases, I would say go for version 4. It's just better. 
So thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you want to hang out, I'm on Mastodon and uh, YouTube, GitHub, a few other places which are listed on the website. Uh, so if you want to get in touch, please let's do. And thank you very much for your attention. If there are questions, I will answer them now. Hello. Uh, do you know if the migrator tool, I assume it's taken a while to debug it, is it getting any better or is there, not, is there an advantage to waiting for another six months before migrating or is the tool as good as it's going to get? Well, the only thing I fully migrated to Godot 4 that I didn't start in Godot 4 uh, was Goat and I did it once uh, so I don't know if the, uh, the, uh, if the migration tool has improved since then. I would say it already did a lot of uh, good things for me. Um, as I said, no, no naming changes were left uh, unnoticed. Um, it even sometimes put like uh, to do goat uh, comment on my code that uh, here the new version of this uh, this uh, singleton or whatever requires extra attributes so like provide them so it even uh, pointed out to me places that it couldn't solve on its own so i would say it's already pretty good but i don't know how much better it got from since the time i i'm uh, uh, i migrated goat i can see that the engine is growing very fast so uh, it probably also goes for the migration tool. Of all the things that you had to do, what was the, the, the longest? Which one took the most time when converting the project? Good question. Um, I would say uh, things like um, uh, this issue with the code, I know it doesn't look um, it doesn't look uh, like a time-consuming thing, but I it, this started a lot of questions going on in my head. Like, is this a bug or is this a change about types? I know there is a discussion about if uh, strings and other complex types should be allowed null values. It's one of the Godot proposals, so you can uh, check it and, and uh, see what, what's going on. It's still open, so the decision is not yet made. Um, and there are a few other issues with the code itself, uh, like one of them was a bug in 403 uh, that I didn't have time to present today. Uh, but th that's why I mentioned in initially that I moved to 403 and then 411. It's already fixed in 411 uh, and it caused my code to fail with an example of if not valued. So th this, would, uh, this would fail. And uh, right after dealing with this, I thought, oh, okay, so not only strings no longer are allowed to be nulls, but also uh, checking for falsy values is no longer uh, possible. That was not the case. It's still possible. It was just a bug in 403. So the learning here is move to the latest version if you are using Godot 4, uh, if you want to use Godot 4. Uh, and you know these, these things were just like, uh, am I am I seeing a bug? Am I seeing a change in architecture? Am I seeing uh, and how to so solve it on my side? So now I cannot use strings and nulls. Should I remove the, the type hints or should I uh, return an empty string? Because then other places also depend on my method returning a null, so I had to like, pull a lot of strings together and figure out a solution. I have one more quick question. Um, of, um, so you said that, that you enjoy Godot 4 experience? Yes, uh, what, definitely. What, is, is there a specific thing in Godot 4 where you thought to yourself, this is amazing, it's better um, than the others? Just the general look and feel of the of the whole thing. I know it's uh, not, not a specific thing, but now every time I open Godot 4, I can see, oh yeah, this is the latest, but this is the the, the, the better version. So and then I open Godot uh, 3, and I feel like, okay, this is this is still amazing, but now it feels like a toy compared to a tool. So and uh, I'm, I'm not saying that Godot 3 is bad, but you know, Godot 4 just feels like more professional and better. Uh, so are there any features in Goat that if you had started on Goto 4 you would have done very differently and now they're just there like in that in that form as like a legacy solution? 
not any that I could recall right now, although I think, uh, maybe not I hope that some things will be different in God of War, but I was afraid that it will be different, uh, significantly different. And uh, what I mentioned is that GOAT was moved from God of 3 to God of 4, but what I didn't mention is it happened right after changing the architecture significantly. So GOAT from a whole Godot project became a Godot plugin. So that's also in AssetLib you can find Godot f GOAT for God of 3 as a full project and GOAT as a God of 4 as an add-on. Um, and I was like, wh while working on this conversion, I was like, probably these things that I'm changing right now, specifically like project-related things, input maps and so on, they will be so different in God of 4 that I will not be able, uh, that, that now I'm working on this code, like putting a lot of time for on, on, to, to work on this, this thing as a plugin. And then I will have to rewrite it completely in Godot uh, 4. But that didn't happen. So uh, there were changes like twins. Twins are significantly different, but they were also small things, uh, no, not like project uh, scale things. I've, maybe the, the blur thing that is now global instead of depending on the environment, that, that, is, that was a surprise, uh, blur settings. But um, uh, other than that, I, I can't think of anything. Thank you very much.